the design manager at Laman 7. So Laman 7 is a WordPress-based um, web design agency. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I've always been interested in design. Uh, I, start, I actually started coding in 2006 uh, when I was 16. And my mom actually sort of like forced me to learn web design. Uh, she used to be an IT lecturer, but she did not teach me anything. So <laughs> I had to learn everything by myself. And then uh, I also picked up uh, Corel Draw, Photoshop, Illustrator. And then uh, in 2007, I moved to WordPress. Before that, I was using Yahoo GeoCities, if anybody remember. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, WordPress gave me um, so much freedom. And then from there, I also started blogging, giving out WordPress themes for people to use and download and use it on their blogs. Then, uh, in 2009, I went to university. Uh, unsurprisingly, I did not study uh, IT. I went into a completely different path and chose architecture. So I studied architecture because I was so passionate about design. And then I worked, uh, after I graduate, after I graduate, I worked a few, uh, a few years in the field. And then I quit. So from 2017, I'm back into web design with Okay, before we head on into our topic, I just want to set the page right so that we all know what UI design is. So UI design is a user interface design. Uh, it's just a design just for the interface. For example, like a car. A car is also a user interface, like a car dashboard with all the buttons and the, the screen, uh, the shapes of um, the, uh, the speed, uh, speed um, display, all of that is all user interface design. And we're just talking about user interface today, not user experience not, uh, uh, and everything else. So just uh, the aesthetics of it. Okay. So why is it important uh, to have good user interface design? because ultimately it can affect in, uh, in some ways the user behavior. If you can't see the buttons or if you don't know, if you can't recognize the icons on the buttons, then the, the user will have problems identifying what the button's for, for example. And then it can help um, you with effective communication, whether um, so that you don't confuse people or you display your information clearly. And then it can also help to uh, increase conversion rates when um, everything is so clear and concise, so it's, e it's easy for your users to use it without much thought. So that's, uh, that's good UI. And also for uh, bloggers and also marketers, it's good, um, good UI helps to retain, retain user interest. So they will keep coming back to your site. So mistake number one that I usually see. These, these mistakes are usually mistakes that I've seen around the web. So, um, and also with my experience <coughs> um, happening. So number one is everything is important. Yeah. So an example would be something like this. Okay. Every element is demanding for your attention. And if you think that I'm bluffing, and there's no way a website can look something like this, I'm sorry, but there is. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a government website, and once you land here, you really don't know where to go. Like, because everything is the same importance. So there's nothing that stands out for you to click on, okay? So what you need to do when you want to determine which one is important, you have to go back to your goal and understand it, uh, understand the audience, and make sure that you strategize your layout based on that goal only. And the goal should be unique 
to the client or your own website. And if possible, narrow down to only one main call to action. <coughs> For uh, just now was a website uh, government portal, so you can have more uh, links because it acts more like a table of table of contents. So for that kind of thing, you may have like one main call to action, but you must also uh, not forget all the other links. So this is what a mock-up might look like once you have narrowed down all your uh, importance. And then this is how it might look like after um, that, that website that you saw just now went through transformation with us. And this is what we proposed to them. Not too sure what happened to the project due to the budget cut recently. <laughs> so yeah, but as you can see, uh, okay. So as you can see, there's a, a search bar right here. So that's a main important thing because there is a lot of pages on this website, and then uh, the links are instead of like the, listing it down like this, we re we recommend it using uh, categorizing the links using um, user, type of user. So who are they, the visitors? So they can click on the, re the relevant uh, link to them. So let's say if they are a lawyer, they can click on this and then th you, you, they will only see links relevant to lawyers, for example. So here could be important uh, or most accessed, something like that. Okay. Second <coughs> is readability. This is something that I've seen a lot uh, because I understand because sometimes when designers um, design a layout, they're so uh, they're so focused on the design of the layout, but they take readability for granted. They forgot to actually try to read the text. Okay, and embarrassingly, sometimes it happened within our agency. <laughs> So I have to keep reminding um, the designers to always make uh, uh, keep in mind the readability. This is what uh, something might look like if it's not readable. Can you try to read it? No, right? Yeah. Uh, wrong color contrast or wrong color pairing. So of course, uh, as designers or even bloggers, uh, always uh, test it out. Test your layout, make sure every word is readable, make sure you can read from left to right without your eyes feel tired. Okay? So the things that you can check are uh, font size and color contrast. And of course, don't forget to ask your mom to try to read it because I'm sure if your mom can read it, majority of other people cannot read it. Okay, the third one is white space. Oh, sorry. This is, oh. So this is what uh, it might look like when you start changing it up. Okay, the third uh, point is poor white space. Anybody knows what a white space is? Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, the empty spaces. Let me, sh if you don't know what it means to the rest of the people. So this is what it mean, uh, what it looks like without white space. Okay, nobody reads newspaper anymore, so <laughs> we tend to forget. <laughs> so yeah, I I try to find um screen uh, newspaper screenshot that's more relevant to us, like Malaysian newspaper. But everything in there is so sensitive, so I started to find uh, random New New York Times newspaper screenshot instead. Yeah, but as you can see, everything is so cramped. But uh, it could be different with newspaper because they want to uh, cram make it uh, print as much articles in one page to save costs or something, right? Okay. So I'll show you uh, how it looks like on web. Maybe this is not too critical, but it can still happen. What's, what's happening here is there's a little <coughs> space between the, the, the font size. So it makes it hard to read and yeah, it's sort of like, yeah. It ties you out, I guess. Okay, so what you need to do is to evaluate and try to make some room. Okay, utilize uh, for CSS designers, you can utilize the margin and padding, which is um, like uh, somebody said here, the spaces between the section. 
uh, pay attention to line height, which is the space between the size, uh, between between the uh, font text lines. Okay, does that make sense? Or if you're a graphic designer, you you call it leading size. Uh, okay, and you can also consider leaving some columns empty. So this is the improvement. As you can see, uh, <coughs> it's much easier to read. Now that we have spaces that we can read. Okay. <coughs> Number four is un underestimating photos. Sometimes it's easy for us to just take photos and just put it there on the layout, you know, just to spruce things up. But we forget that photos can make a statement. For example, right here, like maybe this, this is a mock-up of you know, my so-called uh, design blog. Obviously, the picture is irrelevant, it's uh, dark, it's, uh, the quality is so bad because it was taken with a potato, and then I had like, seat belts on, whatever, and they're not a good picture, of course. So make sure that you use a photo that is relevant. Think about the relevance. The photo and the content or the theme of your uh, deep blog or your website. And try to utilize a strategic placement. And of course, use high quality <coughs> photo. You don't need a professional DSLR to, uh, uh, to take photos with or always hire a photographer, a professional photographer. You, you just need a really good uh, uh, camera, it can be a phone camera, and just uh, learn a little bit about composition, lighting, how you tweak those things and try to make your photos better. So this is what it might look like if I were to change up the, the image. So it's more relevant because it's a design blog and that's me, it's a setting, it's a work setting. And the lighting is uh, well lit, it's sharp. And I'll show you what it might look like on websites. Here we have our our client, one of our client project. Uh, you can see that uh, on the products page, um, this they are transformer manufacturer, and they for the products page we use we showcase like pictures of their factory, and then on quality standard we showcase like you know like. Uh, more close-up view of them cutting out their material to perf to mini to mm. Even the here picture of this guy measuring the whatever equipment that they are manufacturing, and then on career page showing staff their staff like a friendly uh, outlook so that they want to encourage people to apply, right? And then picture of their boss just to showcase like dream, like you know you might be a boss someday because this. Uh, director actually went from started as an engineer there and worked worked his way out into the director that he is today. Yeah, picture of this. So this is how you might want to you know plan out your website, not just um, design the home page, but also the inside pages as well, and use those pictures and enhance your design and message. Uh, next is inconsistent elements, font type, colors, placements, this this kind of thing. Uh, I've seen it a lot, actually, not not at a large scale, but you can maybe sometimes like uh, the design is like all sharp edges, and then suddenly there's a button that are rounded, so it kind of make it out of place. For example, something like this, like sharp sharp boxes and then you have like <coughs> curved radius boxes so you have to determine your theme like what is it going to be like uh, set the colors to one or two main colors and then try to limit to only two font types or if you want to push it you can go for three but you really know you must really know how to use it and not make it like, you know, mambo jumbo or roja. And then, yeah, uh, and pay attention to the, sh the type of shapes and lines that you are using. If you're using dashed lines, try to 
uh, keep to your dash line for whatever reason you want to use dash lines. Yeah. So if you if you use if you take that layout just now and <coughs> change it up like this, something more consistent, it looks much better already, right? And then the next next one is too many fluff. Uh, I think this is becoming uh, more and more infrequent nowadays, like pop-ups, uh, too many for pop-ups, and then animations that doesn't make sense, but probably the weird animations are going down nowadays. And then decorative elements, you know, and, you know, excessive styling. Okay, this is an example uh, that I'm quite embarrassed to show because Kim uh, was designed within our agency. If you don't, if you're not sure what's wrong with it, let me point it out. Okay, out of nowhere. Okay, so it's part, it's part of the footer coming out, so it's more smooth design. Okay, seventh is forgetting mobile view. Uh, okay, so mobile view. It's something should be by default now. You don't even have to make it like uh, put it out there like oh we're going to make your website responsive. No, it's part. It's part of. It's part of your job. It's part of you know. You can't separate uh, mobile view anymore. But uh, sometimes I still see modern website. They don't really pay attention to mobile and they, you know, uh, even though they, they are sort of like mobile responsive. <coughs> But we still have to like pinch zoom or go to left and right to be so that's not a very good mobile view experience. So the tips uh, for mobile view is to always try to reduce the scroll. Maybe you can hide certain contents, hide certain elements, or try to uh, make the content less for mobile. And then anything with pinch zoom, try to avoid at all costs because usually it doesn't work well. Also, I forgot to mention here, uh, pop-ups. Pop-ups usually does not work well on mobile phones. Maybe it, de it really depends on the type of mobile phones that that person is using. Sometimes it works with well with no problem. Sometimes they will have problem trying to close the pop-up and then making your website totally useless for them. Uh, and then, uh, of course, high unnecessary elements. And then, of, I think a lot of people, a lot of some some websites forget about this the size of the text. So when you testing on your mobile, make sure you check again check the size of the text. Make sure it's readable, not too small or not too big. Usually that happens uh, with the header, a header with a banner, banner, and then you have the H one title, right? Usually. On, on web, it will look too big when you uh, convert it. So make sure to customize it specifically for web. Now I'm just go, um, going to wrap up here. Uh, the recommend, uh, this is our recommended uh, page builder that we also use um, in our agency. The reason why we use page builder because a lot of the times the client asks they, that they want to have flexibility to uh, change up the content. So this is something that we get a lot, like almost consistently. But we've done um, custom themes as well, but uh, very few want to pay for that. So uh, Elementor is really good, it's easy to use. It doesn't uh, hog your website speed as well, and you, and the thing I like about Elementor is it's easy to transform it into responsive um, mobile view because you can always go back to mobile view, edit up your settings, and then whatever you do on desktop won't affect your mobile view. Yeah, so it's really good. Uh, it's, it beats DV uh, in my opinion because DV. TV, uh, it's very hard to customize the mobile view. You need a lot of custom codes to add. Beaver Builder, I haven't tried personally, but my boss said it's good, so I believe him. 
<laughs> I have to believe him. <laughs> no choice. Okay. So yeah. Um, anybody has any questions? <coughs> Overall, you have to maintain it because if not, um, it will be like when they click on other page, they feel like they're going to another website because it's a different design. But if you can balance it out, maybe 50% uh, straight line, 50% um, curved lines, you know how to balance it, of course you can do it. But if it's like, you know, suddenly 10% is curved and then the rest is all uh, straight lines, it's going to look awkward. It looks like it's an afterthought. want to go that path, you don't have time to go through all the courses, you can try, uh, for me, personally, what I like to do and what I recommend to other people is to pick a design, maybe you can get from Pinterest or whatever, and try to do it yourself, maybe with your software of choice, maybe for example, Adobe SD, and try to copy exactly, exactly like the, the, the theme that you like, pixel to pixel, don't copy from them, but you just... Do it by yourself, build it, and try to do it the, the same, exactly the same. And then if it's not the same, you have to see, you have to look for details, why is it not the same. That from that way, you can learn about how to detail out your UI design. Because before this, you are not attentive to that kind of detail. So when you try to mimic it, then only you will start uh, noticing all the subtle details that are in the UI design. We can take two more questions. <coughs> So when it's in mobile, it's going to be like one long scroll, right? So think about that. Like, is the user really need? Uh, does the user really need to read all of that six columns worth of content before they get to the main point? That's what I'm saying. So it's sort of like there's no real number. You just have to gauge for yourself. Maybe, but uh, maybe another way to tell is to try uh, experiment. Maybe you can install something like Hotjar. Uh, apps and then try to uh, run it first and see within a month uh, how how many people give up bef bef uh, like how many people scroll to the end uh, uh, yeah. I think that 
effort should be spent on your content. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean because uh, I'm just talking about ITESOL UI. So ITESOL bounce rate. I can add to that. Uh, bounce rate means when people landing to your website, they didn't click any one of that and they left your website. That's considered bounce. So it's not how long they stay on your website, but whether they interacted with your website or not. So it can be one page, but they did click something. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> Take one more question. Uh, yes, uh, there's there's something called Adobe SD, and it has been developed uh, specifically for uh, web prototyping. So it's much faster uh, to do it with XD because a lot of the stylings there are similar to what you can do with CSS. But you. Pardon? Uh, no, no, you just prototype, Just it comes up uh, for I as image. But you can sort of like um, link up the artboards, you can create multiple artboards like that you can in Illustrator. And then you can sort of like link the button to where you want the page to, to go. So it could be a live mockup. <coughs> sort of like live mockup, just images linked together. That's all, yeah. So it, uh, it can be quite uh, impressive. But it's very simple uh, software, so you sometimes you have to get creative around it. Okay, we take one more final question. <laughs> Anyone? Because we have extra space. Um, um, what about the colors used that define works best? I mean, of course, there are some organizations where you have to follow That's a good question. Uh, color screens, as color schemes. There are two ways to go about it. First, um, start with the brand color. Okay, for example, it's yellow. You know, you can either use yellow or color that complements yellow. Maybe uh, green or orange, uh, red. Red is too strong. Uh, so, something like that. Uh, or if you if they do not have a brand color yet or they, for some reason, they don't want to follow their logo color, for example, or maybe their logo color is neutral color, right? Um, black and white or something like that. And they ask them, to, they ask you to come up with a color scheme. What you can do is start with brand, uh, with color emotions. You know, are you familiar with color emotions? Like uh, blue signifies, uh, 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 blue is uh, tied up to like trust. For example, um, yellow is happiness, uh, something like that. Maybe you can start with that. And red is aggressive and fast. So a lot of KFC, um, McDonald's they use red because it's uh, fast and aggressive. Air Asia is aggressive. Yeah. So you can start with um, color motion. That's baseline. All right. That's wrap it up. <laughs> That's all for today from Aisha. Thank you very much.